Now we're ready to look at the network models used to calculate bid prices. And the first model we're going to look at is linear programming. Now this discussion doesn't really require that you know a lot about linear programming, so if you're not real familiar with this topic, I think you'll still get the point of this discussion, which is primarily to show you why a network formulation might be a better approach to calculating a bid price than the approach we looked at in the previous video, which was a heuristic method. So let's just take a quick look back at the example we used in that video. So here was the sample network we were using to illustrate the network flows and the different fares and bid prices. And we used our heuristic model to calculate this bid price. And we pointed out that this model, the heuristic model, only looked at one leg at a time when calculating the bid price. And the problem with that is passengers flow across more than one leg in the network on itineraries often. Sometimes there's only uh, nonstop customers, but this customer is going from Boston to JFK to Miami. This customer is going from LA through JFK to Miami. And when we make a decision on one leg, without considering the impact to the network, we lose valuable information and may, uh, may calculate an inaccurate or suboptimal bid price. The network formulations attempt to consider all the impacts to the network while making decisions at the lake level. And I'll show you what we mean as we go through the linear programming model. So let's go back to that. Okay, so we're going to write down a linear program that can be used to calculate bid prices across an airline's route network. We're going to look at the model that was first introduced by Elizabeth Williamson in her MIT thesis back in the early 90s. It's a straightforward linear program. It's a deterministic linear program, meaning uh, there are no probabilities associated with the demand forecast. And I'll point out what I mean by that as we go through the model. But let's start with the objective function. So linear programs start with defining the objective. What are we trying to do? Well, in revenue management, our job is to maximize revenue. So let's see. I'll start over here and try to leave myself enough space. So we're going to maximize revenue. And now we need to define what revenue is, how we're going to calculate revenue. In this model, we are going to calculate revenue by summing all of the revenue that the airline produces across the network given the seats that they allocate to different fares across the network. So let's start filling this in. So the way you would calculate network, uh, excuse me, revenue is you would multiply the fares that the airline is charging multiplied by the seats sold at those fares. So F, fare, is an input variable. So the airline knows what fares it's going to charge. X, in this case, is the decision variable. So we are going to go through and calculate how many seats to sell at each fare in order to maximize revenue. Now, the level at which we're going to do this is called the ODF level. And I'm going to, oops, I missed an F there, O, O, D, F. So we're going to sum across all the O, D, Fs. I'm going to write this definition down here somewhere. I think I'll have enough room if I do it here. And O, D, F is basically the itinerary level. It's the origin, origin, destination, now it's probably pretty hard to read, but uh, fair class. So if you remember back to our sample network, in fact, I think I'll try to go there quickly. There it is. So the sample network, so the origin uh, in this example is Boston, the destination is Miami, and the fare class is Y. So that's the ODF. Now if we go back to our model here, the fare 
at the OD left level would be, I won't scroll back up there, but I think it was 375. So the fare for Boston, Miami, and the Y class was 375. So once we have our input fares, we can decide how many seats to sell on that itinerary at that fare in order to maximize revenue across the network. So each one of these um, terms, we have a term for each itinerary in the network. And you can imagine on a real airlines network, there are many, many origins, many destinations, and many combinations of origins and destinations and fare classes. So this becomes a very large model very quickly. Okay, so now let's put in some constraints. So we're going to maximize revenue, but we have to do that subject to some constraints. So we're going to write, if I can get my pen to work, subject to, subject to uh, some constraints. The first is called the capacity constraint. So what we need to do is make sure we don't sell more seats at a given fare than we have physical seats to sell. So this is called the capacity constraint. So we're going to sum up all the seats we sell on each itinerary, ODF, and make sure that they're not greater, let me make sure I complete the model here, ODF, not greater than the physical capacity of the airplanes. So we're going to say C is the capacity and J is the leg. So this, this constraint says that for each itinerary that flows over each leg in the network, we don't sell or we don't allocate more seats than we have physical seats. So let's say uh, this is for all uh, ODFs across um, uh, on legs J. Okay, so now we have our capacity constraint. We need one more constraint and that's that we don't want to allocate more seats than there's actual demand for those seats. So when we multiply these two terms, to, uh, the fare and the seats together that we're allocating in order to maximize revenue, this only makes sense if we actually have people who want to purchase those seats. So we're going to put in a demand constraint here, X, so the seats we allocate on each itinerary on each ODF have to be less or equal to the demand for those itineraries. So D is demand, so we'll just write here for all ODFs. Okay? And here's our, de our deterministic demand constraint. So what we're saying here is that we have some deterministic forecast of demand. So we know exactly how many people want to purchase seats on this itinerary. In reality, that's really a stochastic um, forecast. There's some probability associated with that. But in this simple model, we just assume that demand is deterministic. So let me just complete our definitions down here so that you have them and this model is complete. So it's just some do definitions. ODF is the itinerary. X, ODF, that's our decision variable. That's um, the number of seats allocated at the ODF level. Allocated. And then what else do we need to define? Um, C. C is capacity for leg J. CT for leg, leg, J. And then demand is uh, deterministic demand. We'll just say demand for uh, itinerary or ODF. Okay? So those are the terms that we need or the definitions we need to uh, complete this model. So that's it. The model is complete, and we would run some, you know, solution method to solve for these X's and we would find the number of seats to allocate on each itinerary subject to we don't allocate more seats than we have to sell and we don't allocate more seats than we have demand of uh, people who want to purchase those seats at this fair. Now think about how this differs from leg level models. If we were calculating controls from say EMSR we would calculate an X 
but at the leg level, so for each J, for each aircraft in the network, we would calculate that X that maximizes revenue on the leg, then we would move on to the next leg, J plus 1, and we would maximize revenue on that leg. We wouldn't carry any information from the previous solution. We would make independent decisions for each leg throughout the network. In this model, since it's a network formulation, we're choosing all the X's at the same time. And the, the choice of X for a particular itinerary, a particular ODF, impacts the decision we make for the next itinerary. So if I allocate seats on this ODF, I may have fewer seats to allocate on the next ODF because in the network, the itineraries overlap. Let's just take a quick look back at our example network to drive this idea home. Let's say I was starting with a leg level model, uh, say EMSR, to calculate protection levels on the JFK Miami leg. And let's say the revenue maximizing decision was to allocate all the remaining seats to the M fare class at $150 because that's where the demand was. Because that's a leg level model, I'm not considering that there might be demand at higher fares that cross this leg from other origins. So maybe there's a demand for $400 for LAX Miami or uh, $375 for Boston Miami. If I make this leg level decision and those seats get sold at $150, I could be uh, leaving money on the table at the network level. With the network formulations with this linear programming model, we consider all of those impacts before coming up with the optimal allocation. So we're deciding how many seats to sell on each itinerary at the same time, and then summing that revenue up across the network and seeing if that's optimal. Then, in effect, we're comparing that to other combinations of allocations across the network until we come up with a combination of seats that maximize revenue for the entire network at once. Now notice something here is that we've just completed the model. There's no bid price here. The decision variable is actually an allocation. So this looks like we are going to perhaps feed into the airline's reservation system the number of seats we want to sell on each uh, itinerary. In reality, inventory systems really don't work that way. Reservation systems don't work that way. That's why bid prices become so useful and so practical, is that instead of loading all of these allocations, you can imagine how many itineraries an airline network would have. Instead of loading all of those decision variables into the reservation system, we come up with one bid price per leg, and we load that into the reservation system, and that becomes a much more man manageable amount of data. So I think we're running a little long here. Let's continue this in the next video.